So Tuesday, today's Thursday, Tuesday, I had my one month appointment in checkup. I'm doing well. We did come to the decision, myself and my plastic surgeon, that I will need a, um, a revision. Yeah, because the nipples, indeed, are too high. Probably by the time he finishes, because if this is the breast and the nipple is sitting up here, in order to bring it in balance, he's going to have to cut off more breast here, remove more breast tissue there in order for it to center. So more breast tissue. Should I take this off? This is where we are now. So this is where the cut is. And it comes around here like everyone else. Nipples are here. My nipples are right here. This is the breast. Nipples up here. And this nipple, I feel. This one, I'm actually starting to feel a little bit something. So I do think after a month, um, and they're starting to jiggle a little bit, so they're not as hard. They were really rock hard. He says they're still very square down here, which they are, so they'll continue to drop. So that's where I am now. Um, the nipples revision will happen. He said, I don't need to come back for two months. He just wants me now to take the time to heal. When I go back at the end of January, we will talk about the revision. But overall, doing well, I was able to, I'm able to run again. Um, I do want to just share some of the tips that um, I've come across in my one month. So not to keep rambling on. All right, this, my dears, is my bed. And you can see me in the mirror there. Um, this is how I have survived over the past month. All right now day one of the surgery the night of the surgery I came home and I was in this chair minus the the pillows I put my foot still I had my computer you know I had my little notebook to look out my window see my neighbors and it was my plan to stay in that chair after one night I was like I don't there was something psychological in my head that was like I can't do that so I figured out how to make a little fort, as I've heard someone else refer to it, of my bed. So, um, basically, I created an armchair with my bed. So, what I do when it's time to go to sleep is I pull the arms down on the bed. I sit back. This is for the lower lumbar, this pillow here. These pillows, and I know they're not covered because when all of this is done, I'm going to burn these pillows. <laughs> I'm not keeping these pillows. Um, but I basically sit. Is how I've been sleeping for a month, <laughs> you know. Um, and it's okay. I have tried to sleep other ways though I will say I can now sleep on my side I am able to to sleep on my side so I will take these pillows like this and I'll usually put my arm under here and sleep that way okay so and that has only felt comfortable in the last two days prior to that it just hurt I also tried to create, and maybe this will work for some, though I think it's probably still not good for you. So, I tried to create a cube like this, where basically my head was here, my breasts would fall here, so there was no pressure on them, you know, from a pillow or anything being up against them. My torso would lay here, and I would lay back, okay? What I found was, and I felt comfortable maybe for five minutes, was that there was still a lot of natural pressure from my breast falling forward. So it just scared me and I was afraid I would wake up in the morning and just have really swollen breasts. I use the standard. I've started to use the bio oil, okay. But my process for um, working on the scars, I showed you the scar earlier, is to use one of two things. Now, I grew up with a mom who hated dark spots. 
And I would wake up in the middle of the night. She would come in my room, turn on the light. It'd be like 11 o'clock. I'd be asleep. To turn on the light, have this Ambi on her fingertips. I'd be asleep. She'd be <laughs> rubbing it into any dark spot. She hated that. So Ambi is always, though I will say, I think they changed the formula. But I've always had Ambi. So um, for any little blotches here and there, I'll, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but I usually will try to, you know, sort of get them into, you know, the dark spots. So I'm using this and I try to apply these things twice a day in the morning and at night. So right now using this one, I bought this bleaching cream yesterday because as you see, the Ambi's almost gone and I couldn't find Ambi at the Walmart that I went to. I've never used this one. I'm not quite sure, so I'll have to let you know. And I'm only using, look, I'm not a person who's got a problem with the color of my skin. My chocolate is beautiful. So don't be like, ooh, she's got bleachy skin. She's trying to be, no. Um, so I'm using that. This I have, I've used in the past and I had it. Um, the doctor talked about Mederma. I may look at Mederma later, but first, honestly, this has worked for other little scars that I've had, um, chafing from marathons, um, just burns, whatever. So I'm going to stick with and finish this. And if it doesn't, then I'll spend the $27 or whatever it was for the Mederma. But, um, and so that's what I'm using. That right now really is all that I'm using. We'll do a checkup and I'll show you, you know, you've seen one of the scars and let's say in a month, I'll, we'll do a check. I honestly, in just a couple of days that I've used it, I'm seeing a difference already. In the smoothness of the scar, it's making a difference. Okay, okay, so we are in the car. So you're sitting in the seat belt in the car and the belt, is falling right on your nipple and basically as time goes on it's moving and after so many hours this is pressure that's on the nipple what I found and this was purely by chance so this what I did was took this stuck it through here like this voila it takes Okay, let's turn my seatbelt around. It takes the pressure off. If you can see here, right here, there is space here. Okay? Therefore, the belt is not on your breast. And I'm even twisted. My body is twisted. Totally takes the pressure off of your breast. And you can drive. So, you know, I would suggest, I mean, just keeping one of these in the car. Even if you're driving across town or something, after a while that you because I would find myself driving like this okay I would be driving like this holding the seatbelt away from me because it would hurt once you put the pillow in no longer an issue all right if y'all knew what I have gone through to provide this video it has taken me three days of taping Files won't upload, shenanigans, whatever. But I did want to also share with you, you see I've changed because it's a different day, okay? <laughs> but um, the, the garments that I've used. Now, I'll go over both the breast reduction garments and uh, the liposuction garments very quickly. This garment I purchased at Walmart. There were two of them. I think there was a pack of two for $10.97 or something like that. It's a black one. The lights fading it out and a white one this is my favorite one this is my favorite bra um, basically because you keep in mind that the doctors go in they cut up under here and they go back and you basically end up having this stitch over here and what I found with other bras like these this is a cutesy wootsy one that I bought at Kohl's there was packs of them I think this was a three pack Originally priced like $20, but I ended up getting them for like $8 after discounts and all of that. Um, 
I used these for a short amount of time. I still wear them because they give me a different look. They tend to sort of pull things in a little bit tighter depending on what I'm wearing. But the problem with these is that the ribbing, and it's really, it's a covered ribbing if you can see. I don't know if the, it's sort of washed out. Let me try the gray one. Um, the ribbing actually is smoother on the inside than even the ones that I'm wearing now, but there's something about it. I don't know if it's, it's that it closes in the front and that it's stitched here. It's just a more comfortable bra. So I basically wear these most of the time. Again, if I'm going out for a couple of hours and I want a smoother look, then I'll put that on. Um, and so basically, those are the two bras that I've used. Now, I will show you here a picture of the full body for those of you who would also go through the lipo section. You'll see this, this garment, and it basically, you pull it on, and it pulls the butt, everything in, and uh, it's a spank. It is awesome. I actually have four of them. I have three in black and one in beige. I don't know why I bought the beige, but I bought the beige. And um, the only problem that I found with that one is that it sort of cuts off my circulation where your leg and thigh, like here, like in here, it sort of cuts that off in there. And uh, if I'm wearing it at night, it's a little bit of a problem. So what I'm wearing now is basically this. I have two of these. This one is also made by Cupid, which you've seen with the other um, garment I will hold on and my um, tag is showing <laughs> but this I've gotten in a small basically small fits me uh, the full body the other garment I purchased it a medium in all of them I may want to purchase a small but honestly at this point that was good for the first couple of weeks but after that I needed less full body coverage and found that this does what it needs to do. So I basically use that. This is the tag for it. And again, it's by Cupid. Um, and this one, uh, I'm dropping it. I believe it was $13 from Walmart. So the, the garments for me that worked, and I've purchased things from Kohl's, I've purchased the bras from Target in different places, what truly worked for me was taking my butt to Walmart, cheap, their bras snap up in the front and um, the center and the other thing. So um, yeah, these have worked. And in a second, let me grab the other uh, sports bra that I purchased. So I mentioned earlier in uh, my video that I started working out again. The bra, the very best bra, and again, I've run seven marathons. Um, and I ran them at double D chest size and my bra, which was the go-to, is by Enel. All right. It looks more like a harness <laughs> and it is. I just took this out of the washer. It's a little wet. Uh, and I basically will hand wash it each time I come in. I just put it in the washer today, whatever. But um, it snaps up the front. It was actually uh, endorsed by Oprah and that's how I found out about it like in 2012. And uh, this thing, you put it on and you pull and cinch those things up, your breasts will not move. They ain't going anywhere. But you got to get it in the right size. So E-N-E-L-L -L is the name of the bra. Make sure that you measure your rib cage. And that will basically help you to determine what size you need to get. For me, this is a one. I believe at one time I was wearing a three. So I've come down a couple of sizes in this. Um, but yeah, those, those are, these are the primary garments that you're gonna need your first month post-breast reduction surgery. And if you, again, throw in the liposuction while you're there, you are gonna need things that cinch your midsection together, right? I realized that I did not talk about one of the most important things, and that is pain management. How do you handle the pain after surgery? Um, especially one that's invasive that they've cut 
things and they've taken things out and they suction things out of you. Um, it's been a month for me. I generally, the first three weeks is when I was dealing with the most pain. Um, now I really don't. I have pain to the touch. Like when I touch, it hurts around the stitch areas. Um, but there's really not a lot of pain. Even last night, uh, and this is the next day, mind you, because I, whatever. So, of course, I have on different clothes. Uh, but I could not upload this video without addressing this. Um, but even last night, I was sort of able to lie on my stomach. I chose not to because my abs were hurting so bad. But the breast thing was not that much of an issue. So for me, that, that healing process and being able to lay down on my stomach, mm, a little more than a month, you might be okay. But addressing pain. So, of course, the doctor prescribed the standard, the hydrocodone for me, and um, a anti-nausea medication. I never had to take the anti-medic anti-nausea medication um, they gave me a patch behind my ear at the surgery time that I wore for three days and they gave me whatever the during the anesthesiologist visit when he like set me up he addressed that no nausea no problem with that so then we just really get down to pain and I'm sorry I'm shaking but um, I haven't put this on a tripod or anything just trying to make sure I get this in um, so for me, uh, I took the hydrocodone off and on. I, of course, took it for the first three to four days. Every four hours, I took it. Set the alarm, I took it. Uh, because I just didn't want heavy pain to set in. But after that, I felt that I could manage my pain with basic Advil. So I took Advil, uh, the ibuprofen 200 liquid gels. Got a big bottle of them. And uh, basically took those. The pain, for the most part, during the day subsided after two weeks. When it would kick in for me was at night, about 8 o'clock at night. For some reason, my nipples, everything would just hurt. And so there were some nights when it was really bad, and I would take one hydrocodone and, um, and a couple of Advil. And the doctor prescribed 40. I think I still have 20 or so. So maybe maybe 15 or so. I might be maybe about 15 of the pills left. Um, so I did use them, but I'm just afraid of abusing that type of thing because it can be devastating. So I just chose to not rely heavily on that. Um, so Advil, I, I was not an ice pack user. There are people who use ice packs. Pro probably why I'm still dealing with some swelling is that I've not used ice packs, but you can use those. A lot of people complain about itching. I have not had any itching at all one month out no itching whatsoever I almost think that my itching has been replaced with the pain that I was having during week three and the first part of week four where at night I would just be in pain you know uh, maybe after one month is when I'm supposed to start itching I don't know but I do know that people say that they would take Benadryl or they would take it in the liquid. They say the uh, pills are slower acting. If you take the Benadryl liquid, it's gonna make you sleepy. So you, you know, you know, you don't want to take it at work or something. But that, and actually getting the Benadryl sprays and spraying it on your sites. Uh, but again, that's not something that I can speak of on a personal basis because it's not been my experience. But I did want to duck in and address this because, of course, this is a huge, huge, major issue. This is, you know, what keeps a lot of people from even having the surgery because they're afraid of the pain. And let me tell you, the pain should not keep you from doing it because for the most part, if you've got a good professional, you know, doctor and practice, they're going to help you manage that pain. And, you know, the, the bigger challenge will be whether you like your results um, and you can have a good doctor who still, you know, doesn't do things quite right the first time and you have to go in for a revision like myself. So, um, I'm, I have no regrets in having done this. I think, um, the biggest challenge ha was probably the first two weeks and it really wasn't a challenge and the challenge, to be honest, was for, with the liposuction, not really the breast reduction. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm for real now. I'm like really gonna go. I got stuff to do. I'm out of here. Ciao.